So this is an important aspect. In fact, I was wishing that some of the police officers would have been present here because uh, a lot of problems arise. Because in fact, uh, when a girl of 17 years is uh, raped, they file that case under the Children's Act. It doesn't come because once you are, the girl is 17 years old and raped, she's no longer a child. Mass treatment would be any kind of ill treatment of a child, physical ill treatment, mental ill treatment, emotional ill treatment, and even under the concept of child abuse. In fact, uh, for those who are, have a legal background, the child abuse is defined under Section 2M of the Goa Children's Act 2003. Child abuse in, uh, means maltreatment and includes psychological and physical abuse, neglect, cruelty, sexual abuse, emotional maltreatment, etc. Intercourse, sexual touching, all comes under grave sexual assault. And in fact, grave sexual assault under our Goa Children's Act is a more severe punishment than rape. Under the IPC, rape is punishable with imprisonment up to, up to life or a fine. But under the Goa Children's Act, there is a minimum punishment of 10 years, which shall not be less than 10 years and which may extend up to life imprisonment. And the minimum fine, in fact, the fine that is provided under the Goa Children's Act is, shall be 2 lakhs. Further speaking, Justice De Costa mentioned the importance of the right to privacy and confidentiality with respect to children. The principle of right to privacy and confidentiality. This is one of the very, very important aspects that all of us have to keep in mind. No doubt, presently it is only on the law books. The Watch Children's Act came into force in the year 2003, now five years have passed. And yet, the right of the child to privacy, you know what I'm trying to say is that uh, the provision in fact says that the confidentiality, privacy shall be protected by all means and through all stages of the proceeding. Now unfortunately today, when a complaint is filed at the police station, immediately next day we read in the press that the, father, the father's name comes. Some papers and uh, channels also mention the names of the victims. In the last few days, I'm uh, seeing that names of victims are being mentioned also. In this way, actually, we are causing great harm to the interests of children. Because we have to protect their privacy. Once you, because we must understand that the child has a future. is at a very tender age. He has a long life ahead for him. The moment his name appears in the press, her name, his or her name appears in the press, especially of a child. The entire picture and image of the child gets uh, distorted. Also speaking at the program was the director of Setu Center for Child Development and Family Guidance, Dr. Nandita D'Souza, who cited examples of child behavior and how parents could deal with them in a practical manner. Drawings again, asking the child to draw a picture of themselves and using that as a tool for communication. So, okay, suppose uh, this is a uh, hurry, okay, um, now hurry gets very angry, okay, so where, where does he feel this anger? And the child will say, um, uh, pressure the hand and the head by the thought bubble, what does the child say at that time? So like this, you, uh, you come to know what actually what happens when the child gets angry. Who behave badly are feeling badly inside. Either they're angry, they're frustrated, they're worried, they're upset, and that's, they show that through their behavior. Third is goals. Children want something and they um, use their behavior to get what they want. The causes outside them, maybe in the family, in the home, okay, alcoholism, domestic violence, in school, bullying, uh, studies that they cannot cope with, friends, poor role models, um, and of course the role models in the societies. Unfortunately, many of the so-called celebrities lead very uh, kind of uh, disturbed lives and they become the role models for our children. Sometimes, you know, uh, starts singing in the class or tapping their pencil or in the home they do things for them. The Kolwa Tourist Taxi Owners Association held a peaceful agitation in, in the village of Kolwa on Wednesday morning as they submitted a memorandum to all hotels, travel agents and other agencies related to tourism in the village, petitioning them to protect the interests of the members of the association. The association is concerned as taxi and bus operators as well as travel agents from outside the jurisdiction of Kolwa village have been conducting business within Kolwa, thereby depriving the local taxi owners of their business. Speaking to Goa 365, the Joint Secretary of the Kolwa Tourist Taxi Owners Association, Connie Rodericks, elaborated on the reasons for the agitation. We have, we have this peaceful agitation just to tell the hoteliers or the other travel uh, tourism doing the industry um, people that.
they should provide us with business. They should give us our daily bread. If we don't give us our day, they don't give us our daily bread. We are deprived of our business. We cannot uh, uh, pay the loans of the vehicles. We cannot. Uh, support our families. So if we don't get business, how we will support our families? I feel the uh, villages should help us. And I, I know that the local MLA, the panchayat, and the local people are there uh, with us. But I request also the transport department as well as the tourism department to support us in this agitation or whatever we are putting the demands. If we are ready to meet the uh, Chief Minister, Mr. Digambar Kamath or Pandora Matkaika, who is the transport minister also. Meanwhile, the taxi drivers of Seoli, accompanied by Sylvester Fernandez, Sarpanch of Seolim, yesterday met the Sarpanch of Kalangut, Joseph Sequera, to discuss the matter regarding the taxi drivers in Kalangut not permitting the Sioni taxi drivers to rent their vehicles to tourists in Kalangut. Resolution at Lamna. Up the taxi is so little her, but you not come. And then the Sangle Army out the serpent of Funko Takalaguja, and I'm such a man in the same. A few accompanying taxi drivers from Shiolim elaborated on the problem faced by them. It is a group wide in the Kalamucha Brigade in Gadio Gana on the last table. So, whoever has the level of this Gala Kale. Next time, I will go to the house. 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 While stating that the problem was not within the purview of the panchayat, the Sarpanch of Kalangud, Joseph Sequera, said that he had directed the concerned officials to do the needful. Tourist Taxis Owners Association, Kalangud, a magician, about 60 of them, he is a tourist and taxi person. So, I was there and I was I was there and 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 I was there So I was there and I was there So I was there and I was there and I was there and I was there and I and the letter was that this work is police, this work is assistant director of transport, and this work is traffic seller. This work is not a work. We'll be back with more news on the other side of the break. Stay with us. Welcome back here with Goa 365. Peter Kenyon, chief executive of the United Kingdom-based Chelsea Football Club, is presently on a visit in India to develop ties between Chelsea Football Club and the All India Football Federation in an endeavour to further improve the sport in the country. Mr. Kenyon addressed the press conference at the Fatoda Stadium in Margao in the presence of the AIFF Secretary Alberto Colasso, the GFA President Joachim Alamau, Indian football coach Bob Hutton, and head of the Chelsea football club Ben Wells. Chelsea was the first major English Premier League club to sign an agreement with the Asian Football Confederation to develop football in China and it is now India's turn to benefit from their expertise. Our senior reporter Kenzel Roderick spoke to Peter Kenyon on Indian football and more. We're involved with the AFC on their Vision Asia project and we've had discussions, uh, ongoing discussions about how Chelsea 